Nadal will get this one going. And he gets it going in pretty good fashion. Delighted to say we've got Luke Thank Jensen you. courtside. Evening to you, Luke. Fellas, it is electric down here when Nadal took the stage. The place erupted. Luke, what have you made of Berrettini's game from what you've seen from him over the last couple of weeks? Oh, classic big boy tennis. Huge serve. Has a lot of speed for his thickness. He's got a lot of muscle in that upper body and rips a world-class forehand. But he's got a massive, huge cavity in his backhand. Decent slice, but that backhand drive is it's not at this level. That is. Gets a worldie. And it's not a big swing because, as Luke suggested, because he's so strong in the upper body. He's thick as well. He's like Stan. Make a good center in rugby, a good linebacker if you enjoy your American football. Doesn't need a long, languid swing in order to generate pace. He's got the bulk behind it. Told Perrottini walking onto the court today. Rob, obviously, the size of the task goes without saying. He knows that he's playing one of the greatest of all time. But from a tactical perspective, what do you, what would you have been telling Perrottini before he walked out there? He doesn't move as well as a Schwartzman. So for me, he's got to play big tennis, both on serve and when he gets into points like that. I want to see him I'm trying to rip that backhand cross court hard. I'm not a big fan of. Of him going down the line there. I think he's got to try and rush Nadal off the forehand side because you can't rush him off his back end. He just defends and attacks so well off that wing. And Araman misses like that on second serve return, so I think he has to push the envelope. You know, he doesn't want to get involved in too many long baseline rallies unless he really has to. If he's got a, a 30 or point or, or break point, I think he's got to conserve a lot of energy for his own service games. If this becomes a physical battle, Nick, there's only going to be one winner. That's uh, exactly what we were talking about a little earlier. And of course, Nadal's used to these stages as well. You've got to think about the adrenaline and the nerves that come with playing a big match like this for Berrettini. That sucks even more energy out of you. And the start of the match so important. And a couple of big first serves. I'll try and get the first and second service games under your belt as quick as possible. He won the title in Stuttgart, didn't he, without dropping serve the entire week. That doesn't happen too often. It's the first week of the grass court swing. Now that's very nice. And let's not forget that when he won in Gishtard last year, Nick, it was all 49 service games mm -hmm. in which he was able to hold. So obviously the cornerstone of his game. Serve well, he'll play well. Initially when that lady was sitting down, I thought it was a red dress until she stood up and then obviously you saw the flag, it's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. I mean, 
legion of supporters. Greatest sportsman ever to come out of Spain, without a doubt. Got some good footballers, but it's a team sport. Good guys to help you. Nadal's second serve return position has varied a little bit through the tournament. He was being fairly deep to start, but interesting to see he was right up on the baseline there. Carlos Moya, Francisco Roig, Rafael Maimo, left to right. They're just sitting behind Rafael. Long time physio. 14, that's it. Played his first major qualies here two years ago. It's been a quite a rapid ascent for him. Only played his first major main draw at the start of last year for Berrettini. So when he has made the breakthrough, it's come pretty quickly. You can see how far back Nadal is for that first serve now, stepping up for the second. there was obvious to get to the Berrettini backhand wasn't it he knows if he can get into that wing he's going to be favorite Couple of big breaths for Berrettini oh, how's that for a one-two punch Luke <laughs> <laughs> he bone crushed that forehand Absolutely blew up the tennis ball on that. 96 miles an hour, that forehand coming down it. That's a pretty impressive one, too. Uh, you know, I was just thinking back to when Nadal played Kevin Anderson in the final here, and he, he used the same tactic of standing so deep for the first serve, and it actually threw Anderson off. Got to get used to the depth perception of your opponent being so far back. It can affect the way you serve. But Robbie, don't you think that Kevin Anderson doesn't possess that big forehand yes. that Bertini does? The cold one. I mean the yeah, yeah. No, I'm just making reference to, to the serve in itself, and it's going to be interesting for me whether Berrettini tries to press a little bit more on serve or just go with his natural rhythm. Of course, he's got the forehand to back it up. Um, but I'm just going to keep an eye on that first serve percentage versus how it's been, because nobody that he's played against has, has returned from that position, Luke. Slicing his back in a fair bit over the course of the two weeks. It's about 45% uh, of the time he's using that slice. A shot he says he actually perfected when he was injured a couple of years ago. Couldn't really play for three months, but one thing he could do is hit a lot of slice backhands. Already being yes. tested. These early service games so important for the Italian to feel part of this contest. Help grow the belief that he belongs on this court with Nadal.
beginning. And that is a tactic that has also worked very well for him over the course of this tournament. A little one-two, and it's got to be a player, isn't it? Rob, with the dance standing where he is. Definitely, and growing up on those clay courts in Rome, that's a shot right there that he would have honed. You can see the slice as the ball comes off the strings. Beautiful slow motion. difference haven't we in Nadal's serving numbers over the course of not just these two weeks but the summer as a whole a little bit more pacier He's actually up six miles an hour 13. on the average first serve speed from last year. And perhaps more importantly, the unreturned serve number has jumped significantly. He's at 44% unreturned first serves at these championships. Compared to where he was 12 months ago at 29, Rob. Mm. So up to 41 from 29. Mm -hmm. 44, excuse me, to 29. Mm -hmm. That's a big step up. So devastating when he gets 14, 15. that forehand after the serve. And he's, he's getting to use that first shot after the serve on the forehand. Even behind the second serve, as often as 77% of the time. It's so difficult to find his backhand. And even then, you're not getting much reprieve, are you? So three games in to the second semi-final. A quarter of an hour. It's 2-1. Nada leads two games to one for set. He was forced, of course, to retire, wasn't he, at the semi-final stage here last year. Dominic team certainly taking a, a big chunk out of him. Along the way, let's not forget it. What was the last we saw of him, wasn't it? Last season after the US Open, he didn't return to the tour until January of this year. Probably going to take a decent break after this event as well. We'll touch on, on that in a moment. Want to maximize your time between games here on the change of ends. As a guy who certainly knew how to play some ball time. on these courts. A little quicker back in the day. Used to love watching Boris serve and volley his way 
around the hard courts here at the US Open. Take your seat quickly, please, ladies and gentlemen. Matteo Berrettini, the fourth Italian male to reach a Grand Slam semi final in the Open era. Players are ready, thank you. And he's also the first man to reach the semi final here at the US Open when it's been on a hard court. Because mm. uh, when Corrado Berazzuti did it in 1977, Nick. It was on the clay. Yeah. And a man he'll know what about that is Luke Jensen. Westside Tennis Club, Forest Hills, thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. Home it, of the very first US Open in 1968. And of course, uh, Luke is a tennis director there. Couldn't be in better hands. You are too kind. You're pretty close, up close and personal to the Berrettini serve. What do you like about the motion, Luke? Well, it, it, what's interesting is most big servers have really good knee bend. He doesn't have much legs involved. It's kind of a real short dip. And it's all upper body. I mean, those broad shoulders, it gets all raw energy and power from that upper body. Ankles are strapped. Probably precautionary somewhat. Remember, he has had uh, ankle trouble this season. He actually stopped him from defending that title, didn't he, Gustard? Mm -hmm. That was the reason he missed Montreal, Nick. Had a bit of shoulder issue in Marrakesh. So you know, these guys are always having to deal with something. to understand that pattern of play when you do rip a backhand cross court like a Matteo did and a nine times out of ten Nadal is, is going to defend cross court there you've got to take a page out of Novak's book just stay in that backhand corner give him the line yet to win a point behind his second serve Berrettini Loves his basketball, does uh, Berrettini. Loves watching the NBA. So LeBron James is his favorite player. Is he any good? He's pretty good, that guy, and he's a big unit. Talk about a great athlete. Brilliant from Berrettini. Just the start he would have wanted. Staying with Nadal in these opening four games. How was the sound off the Junior strings there, Luke? It, it's, I'm telling you, how often have you called a match where you can say someone is out hitting the doll from the forehand wing? Forehand to forehand, Berrettini is just hammering the tennis ball, where it looks like Nadal's ball is just coming back at a slower speed. Too good. It, it's amazing. It really is amazing how he can rip that forehand. Mm hmm. Yeah, and what's interesting, Luke, is actually the spin rates are almost identical for these two players off the forehand. 
I mean, you can see it when you're courtside, man. It is popping off these strings. two-hander three service games for Nadal just the two points lost in them he has a slender lead 3-2 three, three games to two for set. it's phenomenal how well Nadal defends off their backhand side a shot that we often highlight has been so improved over the last 18 months. He's predominantly right-handed, don't forget that. So it's a very natural feel for him. The motion. Plays golf right-handed, this everything else right-handed pretty much. consistent season it's been it's actually the first time in 11 years that he's made the last four of all four majors he's been able to play his best tennis at the big four events a season where he's kept it to be fairly slim in terms of the events played with that problem of course in Indian Wells that kept him out of Miami Matteo Berrettini. Thank you. I'll be pretty pleased in these opening 24 minutes. Finds himself down 2 3. Zuti, Italian Davis Cup captain, of course. Travels a lot on the tour, does Corrado? Mm -hmm. I think all those Fabio Fanini matches have aged him in the last decade. <laughs> Especially those ones this year in Monte Carlo. <laughs> Some serious uh, zip on that forehand. Let for service.
we know he's got the fire power. But again, showing us he's got many tricks up his sleeve. Crushing forehands, and there you get a good idea of the pace of the Berrettini forehand. Where does the power come from, Rob? Because it feels like it's a small, quite short swing, a little Fanini-esque in terms of the shape of the swing. Yeah, it's just so much upper body strength, Nick. And wrist action. Left, first service. Reminds me a little bit of, of Stan. Stan uses his legs more, but that upper body is so strong. Decent coil. But it's just the, it's the strength, it's raw strength, the ability just to bludgeon the ball. strike from Matteo Berrettini. Ten winners on the day already. Three games off. He's punching in bunches right now. I mean that it's just like a normal swing for this guy. It was lights out. I wonder what Corrado thinks of a foreign like that. I could have Good young crop of players. I shouldn't say young, but a good crop of players in the top 100 now. Good mix of old and young. Berrettini takes the opening point of this game. They've got two of the world's top three under 18 in Italy. They've got the world's best under 19 player. Yeah, that's uh, Sinner, Yannick Sinner. And in terms of depth, Italy now have 16 players in the top 200. So good. And then we saw some big servant volleys. Break point down against Diego Schwartzman after being four love up. Schwartzman claws his way back to four all in the opening set. He's got a break point. Nadal serves and volleys out of the blue. I mean, you talk about an incredible tennis IQ. Nadal not going to be out then on the forehand side. That was sumptuous. That one-two combination gets to use the forehand after the first serve on average 85% of the time. He got to use this forehand pretty often as well. That former world number one, Carlos Moya. Chance here for the Italian. Good body language from Berrettini, isn't there? Very purposeful walk. He works with a sports psychologist as well. Always trying to improve the mind. I think it's so important. We, we know that the mental side of the sport is massive. And then it 
Again, Nadal's so good at playing the psychology game there. Giving the vamos when he wins that important point. Sending a message to the other side of the court. I've won the big point. off the game. Nadal stays ahead in this Nadal opening set. 4-3 for the set. second seed. I think that's what you call holding your position, isn't it? Just about. That's a shot he's really hit well. The forward knights. That one's a little bit more inside out, but his forehand down the line has been dialed, and it's always a barometer for me of his confidence. That's why that left bicep was so big. The old buggy whip finish. Hey guys, what would you say Bertini's forehand against Gonzo Gonzalez from Chile? Yeah. I mean, it's <laughs> right in that area code. Oh, it's a good, good comparison, Luke. Um, I'd have no problem Time. taking either. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be fussy. But I'd probably go with probably go with Berrettini's. I just like the compact swing. I think it translates well onto other surfaces. We've seen him already win on, on grass. Matteo Berrettini, who will make his debut in the top 20, regardless of what happens today on Monday. He'll actually jump up to ninth in the race as well after his run to the semis here. are actually heading to Italy, aren't they, in a couple of years' time? Feels like it's an appropriate time, maybe, it, to be it making is. that change. 2021, the top eight scars in the world will gather in Turin. Just that. 15, well, against uh, 98 out of the top 100, this probably would have been good enough to win the point, but Nadal, of course, is not in that category. His ability to hit and move, so he's digging himself out of the corner while he hits the shot. Line. 
The ball was called fault. Damien Dumasoir in the chair. He knew. Qatar did have a couple of break points in the opening service game of the Italians. Now has two more. Mr. Benetini has two challenges remaining. Mr. Nadal is trying the ball on the right center service line. The ball was called in. That was a timely first serve because you know, it started out with some good numbers as far as making that first serve is concerned. 30-40. Mr. Nadal has two challenges Just around 70%. It's dropped to 57. Needs another one here. As good as an ace. It might be bomb appetito, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, absolute cannons. Getting him out of trouble for now. to get around the slice, simply outstanding. He is so good playing out of that backhand corner. Just uses the angle so well with the forehand from that side of the court. I'm very interested to hear from you what the conditions are like as far as the humidity is concerned down there. It's not bad at all. I mean, Berrettini's sweating, but he's working. Nadal's always working, so he's sweating. But it's not like it has been when it's really heavy down here. Mm -hmm. Ball's really popping off the court. Some of the fastest play I've seen in the tournament where the ball's really jumping. I mean, he is not intimidated at all against Nadal. It is really incredible to see this guy's focus and confidence. himself back all square four games on yeah and especially Percent. so luke when you consider this is nadal's 33rd grand slam semi-final of his career and it's just the italian's first how's that for a golfing experience i mean he serves to really good targets too i mean he doesn't hit it general it's pace with great placement and then he follows it up with just this huge thor hand
Yeah, Luke Jensen spelling that T H O R. That's Very right. nice. <laughs> and I hope. The hammer of Thor. <laughs> the listeners picked up on that. backhand is the weaker shot so therefore don't assume too much risk so what does he do he hits it as hard as he can right up the middle of the court doesn't give Nadal any angle to work with and it's the next shot that he's interested in gets to use his forehand he's hitting that backhand aggressively but to a big target great mantra to have Fight. Oh. Mr. Nadal is sharing the ball on the left service line. The ball was called fault. And it's an overall from Damien. Ooh. 30 minutes. That's not right. That's not the mark. I mean, it may have been good, but it wasn't that far in. Technical difficulties. No, that was a strange one. Let's have a look in real time here. Hmm. Yeah, Nick's giving me the palms down. Oh, yes. That'll get the thumbs up from his team. What a pass. Absolutely drills it, doesn't he? Nadal with the best view in the house here. You can see how quickly he covers the acreage. And that's where the short swings help him, isn't it? On a ball like that. Guilt-edged opportunity. Good look at that second serve. Got to take the net out of play. Just how tough this opening 45 minutes has been. And the challenge has been laid down. It's 5 4. Nada leads five games to four. Percent. Dealing well with the first uh, little bit of adversity. Is it, isn't that one of the best dealing with any adversity, whatever it might be, wind, things going against him, poor calls, whatever it might be. Said he took a lot of lessons, didn't he, from his uncle in the early days. Of course, his uncle was a, a very high-profile footballer.
Miguel Angel play for Barcelona and Spain. Very early here. Time. Not a lot of good things so far, Matteo Berrettini. Players are ready, thank you. He's got to maintain this high standard as he serves to stay in set number one. Master tactician. Off the backhand. And he can take it any way he wants. He can power it cross court. He can go sharp angle cross court. He's got that linear strike as we just saw there. A couple of forced errors off his two hander. Well, let's put him in a spot of bother here at Love 30. Dull is when he makes that return. He's almost in the Bronx. Brooklyn. <laughs> <laughs> Bronx is it, yeah. It's far, Luke. It's out there, <laughs> there's no doubt. I mean, he is right with the umpire, the lines people back here. And you can Mr. see Luke is at the is top right the of your screen, just under the American Fata Express line. sign. So, the Nadal ball right along with him. him. Number four, five, in fact, to this opening set. Mr. Nadal has one He's been serving a prolific number of aces over the course of the tournament. Just 66, in fact, for his opening four wins here. Which is about three a set over the course of the tournament. Serve percentage just ticking up nicely. 
That is so timely that. Remember, he's already saved six break points in this set, has Berrettini. That one happened to be a set point as well. It's got him again. Touch of genius. And I love the way he's attacked this drop shot. Same in golf, you've got to hit down aggressively on the back of the ball to create spin. That makes the ball check. Same in tennis, nice press forward on contact. You'll get good check. Yes. Now we talk about the importance of saving the break points. That is as important. You've got to close out service games when you have Golden opportunities like that, Nick. That's in his wheelhouse. That's bread and butter for Berrettini. Yeah, he has amped up the forehand today as well. commentator down there would have loved that old school slice approach a little ken rosewall action <laughs> knife in it your point Nick Five games on. First set. the average forehand speed for both in this match Berrettini 88 that's up seven miles from his tournament average Nadal right where he's been the whole tournament at 75 so it's 88 for this guy versus 75 for this one so he knows he has to push the envelope and so far Berrettini's been walking a fine line but successfully. Been with Vincenzo Santa Padre for a long time, hasn't he? How important is that kind of relationship, Rob? We don't see it too often that. Mm. In the developmental years, coaches hang around, stay with their players till they hit the pro ranks. At the, these two have got a close relationship. I think it's so important. Continuity, but also trust in the person that you're hiring. Complete trust. And I think that the fact that he's using a sports psychologist too, that's made a big difference. already Daniel Medvedev isn't it yeah long time with the Gilles Savara it's not always going to be plain sailing and sometimes you're not going to like what your coach has to say to you when you you've either put in a poor performance on the match court or you're not giving your best during your training blocks but it's for the players best interests Let. first service the term marginal gains a lot these days don't we in high level sport but let's never underestimate the power of doing the basics well day in and day out i think that often gets overlooked oh. 
40. Actually had a good chat with Jeff Kutzi about an hour or so ago before we came on air. He was telling me about the coach of the Colombians, of course, who won the doubles here. He was telling me how they changed their diet 18 months ago. Various different things that have all added up to the success we see them having now. service game from the Spaniard. This has been a really good set of tennis. 6-5. Six six five. Five. Yeah, and Farah winning the doubles here. Two majors in a row for the Colombians. Lovely scenes with uh, Juan Sebastian Cabal's young son running onto the court. Horatio Zabaios and uh, Marcel Grunyol is in the final. Excellent crowd as well, really was a good atmosphere this afternoon for that one. Credit to Eric Buterak for uh, opening things up here. And selling some individual tickets for the men's doubles final. He knew that it could be a good atmosphere and he was spot on. Having put in some good work so far, serving to take us into the tiebreak. <laughs> Luke, you feel this is a more important set for Berrettini to win than Nadal? Absolutely. Nadal is the human, like anaconda, <laughs> just squeezes you to death. He wants the long points, the long matches. You got to get out fast. Every time he's gone to that play, he's got a reward. Fourteen. No. I mean, is that a handful now? It's a nice press forward. It is indeed five. And it is indeed six games for Berrettini. We are in to a tiebreak. Six games all, first set, tiebreak. Most players receive one additional challenge. Martini's tiebreak record is stellar this season. Twenty-two and thirteen he is this year, Berrettini in the breakers. Six service games. Did Nadal, but he's off to a stuttering start here in the breakout. Nadal's fiance and sister in the house. Have you got 
got your wedding invite. Shh, can't say. Tommy Haas. He had a decent sized forehand, but I think he'd pay a fair bit for one as big as this guy's. <laughs> are really stunned they are seeing an emerging superstar just showing some amazing talent when he needed it most and those are priceless to him and once again Nadal not deterred at all by the fact that he's down 4-1. He gives the come on just to let Berrettini know he is going nowhere. That was a massive point in my mind. 5-1, I think Berrettini's got a very good chance of winning this tiebreaker. I think the odds have narrowed significantly now. Yeah, it reminds me of that famous Jimmy Connors quote about Rafa Nadal. He said, Nadal plays like he's broke. <laughs> been broken down at times isn't he it's been 64 minutes this opening set and what makes the situation very unique now in the context of this set is that for the most part we've expected Nadal and everybody here has expected Nadal to to win the set have the break point opportunities he's been out in front suddenly the finish line the finish line in the set is well within sight for Berrettini and the big question is, how is he going to handle it? playing with house money you can have a full crack at these two points on Rafa's serve Three 
great sportsmen in the house in abundance. So Lindsay Vaughan a little earlier, but Tiger Woods in Rafa's box earlier on in the week. That was a Manu Ginobili, famous basketball player. And that's eaten into the lead. Five, four. And he's now in the rearview mirror. And looming large. He is so good at asking you the question, applying the pressure. Berrettini with two set points. Let it for six. Safer option twice, the slider out wide, easier serve to make. What does he do third time round? to be belted just clipping the top of the net and slowing it down and giving Rafa a little bit more time on his pass definitely noise here inside the Arthur Ashe Berrettini Still with a chance to close it out. he's played in this match so far and correct me if I'm wrong Luke have actually been off the forehand side yeah I mean it's a great shot if he makes it but I go back to he had an opportunity to serve this thing out and he went to three slice wide and to go with the cannon down the t-bone and then he puts himself in a tighter situation on that drop shot he's afraid of the situation right now Well, once again, it's out of this world defense from Nadal. The ultimate warrior never stops asking questions. He will never give you a set. You have to earn it. And you have to keep bringing it time and time again. Yeah. <laughs> 
It was Bellatini that was setting the tone of the exchange, but once again, it's Nadal that's come out on the right end. Masterful defence from a man who has won here, of course, in three previous occasions. He has turned this breaker around. Please. Well, one of the sets of the tournament so far is won by Rafael Nadal. Matteo Berrettini will wonder how it happened. Seven, Seven six it is. The guy is a mental giant. Wow. How does he continually dig deep? Just empty that tank refuses to go away it's just such a big part of his dna you can you can look at those numbers yes nadal had chances to to break six of them wasn't able to convert but under the microscope of the tiebreaker once again he was able to do it when it mattered most put balls in play the unforced errors in the end are what hurt berrettini because there's 22 winners in there and if you could have just kept those down a little bit. The opening set would have been his. But now he has got a mountain to climb. How much does the last match take take it out of Berrettini physically? That's the question now moving forward. To win this match, he's going to have to find three sets in there. And how much gas does he have left? Too true, Luke. And how much will the belief be eroded? Now, after letting that opening set slip, you put all that in the mix. Yeah, but Robbie, I look at this as if I'm Berrettini, I'm going, I'm right with this guy. I've actually kind of beaten this guy. At 6'4", I just blinked. The pressure got to me, and that's okay. It happens. But I'm looking at the body of work in the first set, and I'm taking, listen, I got some confidence. I got my forehand. I got my serve. I got some good formula with the drop shot. But at 6'4", he just blinked, got away from him, go back just that basic massive serve, massive forehand combination. Yeah, I think when we came into this tournament, we were asking ourselves, or well, this particular match, what Berrettini had to hurt him. I think we've got the answer, haven't we? But now we, we've got to do it for three and a half hours more. That's right. That's right. Some of the scenes from the crowd. Absolute ecstasy. And agony. <laughs> I'd love to know what their thought is right there. Is it, I can't believe I've missed it, or is it, I can't believe he's turned it around and won it? The guy's a joke. I think you can't believe he, mi he missed it. If I, I'm, you know what I mean? I, I'm thinking, yeah, yeah. I've watched this kid now the entire tournament, called a couple of his matches, and he's rock solid. If he was going to fold, he could have done against Monfils easily. And he just, you know, he's serving for that match and all that. 
that entire drama played out. Time. Well, there's a storm outside, and there was a storm inside for a good proportion of that uh, opening set Thank of you, it. Sir. That you was please. something Ladies else, wasn't it? Matteo Berrettini came with Nadal with everything he had. That's the good news for him. Single the set. bad news is that he has to go again. Berrettini to serve. Italian, the youngest semi finalist here in almost a decade to begin this second set. Moya, who was sitting alongside Francisco Roig. Wow. But we often speak about it, don't we? When you're volleying a ball that's heavily sliced, it goes down off your strings. Rafa misses those, though, about as uh, mm -hmm. once a tournament. I mean, it was fascinating to see the body language of those in the Nadal box there. You wonder if they just believe he's going to always come through those kind of sticky situations. That's what the body language suggests. Thank you. I'd say there's a fair bit of evidence for them to call upon in those situations. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just the 12 French Opens. man or woman of course to win 12 majors one major 12 times uh, 83 titles for Rafa the record for the most masters 1000 titles at 35 looking good here early on in the second well, i'll tell you what one thing berrettini's done very yes. well on the break points he's now faced seven break points on six of them he's made a first serve That'll work. Hawkeye also informing us that he's amping it up in terms of the serve speeds as well when he is down break point. Uh, 
Oh, the sound that that makes off the racket. Yes. It's a combination of shots that is just dripping with quality. The serve plus the forehand. Another triple digit forehand as far as the pace was concerned. 103 mile an hour. Blazing vector. I'll tell you what, the uh, spaghetti carbonara that he's been eating every night must be made of strong stuff, mustn't it? Because <laughs> he's been dining at the same restaurant. Yep. The gentleman that owns it's in his corner. The dynamic duo working beautifully again for Matteo. There he is. Mm. I mean, he looks like a chef, doesn't he? Tell you what, he's not keen on using a razor, is he? <laughs> but Luke, we, we always talk about the importance of weapons, and we know that Berrettini's he's got a weak backhand, but you'll make that trade-off, wouldn't you, every day of the week? Well, I'll tell you one thing. You brought up a point early on in the match how Berrettini is using that drive backhand, and he's just going for it. He's redlining it. And what that does is, is when he does connect with it, Nadal can't do anything with it. You know what I mean? He's, he's got to play a little bit of defense, which allows Berrettini to run around and rip the big forehand. If he just if he just puts it back in play, Nadal's going to take control of the point. So it's an unbelievable, really smart approach to taking your weaker side and just redlining it, going for it. I just love the mental makeup of this kid. I mean, you would think he would just come off the pace a little bit after just blowing that first set. Yeah, he's done well again, saving two break points in that opening service game. He saved all eight now. It's not easy to go against Rafa. And it's the way he did it. You yes. Know, the big serve close to the sideline. Serving through it, through the court. actually to see this guy obviously in the next couple of years what his best surface is because you talked about him obviously being a good clay court player mm -hmm. we know he's won on clay he's had some good results on grass the, the topic of conversation often comes back to the fact that the surfaces are so similar now but it will be interesting to see where Berrettini gets his best results is it going to be on this surface yeah 100 percent Nick it's I still think he's going to be very dangerous on clay serve for in combination it's going to be even more lethal because he's going to have a, a fraction more time to run around the return and dictate with the forehand what do you think Luke Berrettini's career path the next Boy. few years where's he going to be most effective do you think well the clay is going to give him time to really develop that backhand a little bit better okay. but I think this surface here where all of his weapons are in full flight. I mean, think about what he can do at the Australian Open, what he can do here at the U.S. Open. I mean, he's got options, and that's always nice, isn't it? Well, you can win points with two major weapons like the serve and the forehand. And he's a beast. I mean, being this close to him, he is a beast physically. The weight of shot that's just flying off his rack is so impressive. Well, how do you stop that? I mean, 113 wide. Nadal's defending. This is Nadal he's playing against. He's not playing against some park pro. <laughs> Just having a look at his results at tour level. 
this one uh, 16 matches on hard 24 on clay and 13 on grass it's a good win loss record on the grass isn't it mm. just remember he won stuttgart and then went deep the following week at halle made semis there before losing to goffa Yeah. So, so really a nice spread of results right on the different surfaces. It's certainly not top heavy. Yeah, and I spoke to Craig O'Shaughnessy this afternoon about in particular his match with Federer on centre court at Wimbledon. And he said to me that it was a huge learning curve for him to play Federer on centre court. It was such a big deal for him that emotionally he learnt a lot that day. He came off the court. Federer gave him a dusting on centre court. Might be the last guy to... Feel the force of the Swiss, though, will he? Now we always say that the That's feedback you that you get about your game when you play the very best is invaluable. You know where you need to make improvements. You know what actually works. Don't forget that. Diet of uh, the Rafa forehand cross court. He has had eight chances to break in this match, and so far has failed to make any of them count. the spin so the ball is going to slide off your strings and he's calculated that perfectly top 100 for the first time just over a year ago Berrettini in March in fact of 2018 he got his ranking into double figures for the first time might have it in single figures pretty soon single figure Unable to crack the Berrettini serve. Berrettini two games. one second set. Two games to one second set. First set Nadal.
An hour and a half in the second semi-final. Daniel Medvedev has made a fourth successive final. More importantly, he's into his first major final with a win earlier on today. He'll be back in a couple of days from now. Who will he face? Doing some digging into the archives with Hawker and comparing the forehand of Del Potro last year in the semi finals against Nadal to Berrettini's today. Whose do you think was bigger? The Potros was 82 miles per hour on average. Berrettini right now sitting at 85. And we know what a wrecking ball of a forehand Del Potro has. So that puts things into perspective very nicely. Eighty-two Del Potro, 30, 30. currently eighty-five Berrettini. also have to factor in when you're talking about those numbers is obviously you have to look at the spin rates don't you and one thing that stands out about Berrettini's forehand is it matches Nadal's so therefore he is hitting with a lot of spin so that it uh, magnifies and in many ways makes it even more impressive that he's able to hit mm -hmm. at that much pace yeah good point Turn in good style. Two against him. There he is. Uh, the last Italian to make a, the semi finals here at the US Open. But of course, as we mentioned, that was when it was played on clay at the Forest Hills 1977. Corrado Berazzuti. Davis Cup captain, of course. He's got a uh, pretty good squad to choose from now. Davis Cup finals taking place in Madrid at the end of the season. Italy, assuming they can get a full team out, are going to be a force to be reckoned with. Oh, 
Oh, so lucky. old chip wasn't it good bit of improvisation off the an awkward one that's Berrettini was recounting wasn't he in his uh, post-match press conference the other day his first memories of tennis and he was talking about that Rome, Farnell, Correa. He was a young kid, turned on the TV, gripped by it. Mm. On serve, we stay. Hey guys, you mentioned that Berezuti was the last Italian to get into the semis of a U.S. Open. Well, there's an interesting fact, a big moment in 77 during that match. Berezuti was playing Jimmy Connors. Connors uh, hit a ball, and it was called good, and Berezuti on his side of the court had circled the mark. So as the guy was coming, the umpire was coming off the chair to go check the mark. Connors had run across the other side and wiped off the mark. Wow. And so you can YouTube it. It's a really good moment. What's ironic is a young Jimmy Arias was there watching that match. So that's where he got his antics from. <laughs> How about that? Uh -huh. Now we know. That's a... Great piece of tennis trivia. Thanks, Luke. That's very cool. Don't mention it to Berezuti. We won't. <laughs> Not happy. <laughs> I made that mistake. Major of the year, we're down to final three players. We were mentioning the Matteo Berrettini story before the break about how he was not inspired by certainly one of his early memories of the sport was watching the final in Rome with uh, Guillermo Correa, a match that lasted five hours. Seven six in the fifth. I mean, the ball striking and the movement from Nadal and Corey on that day was it's mind boggling. Again, just make sure you've got a soft place for your jaw to land when you watch that. And of course, he was a young boy, he was a Berrettini, but he was so annoyed that the match was going on so long because it was on free to air on TV in Italy, and he was waiting for the cartoons to come on, but they were being delayed by the end of the match. And of course, he ended up getting engaged in the sport a lot more than what he, he thought he was going to be. Yeah, it would have been rather apt if the cartoon was the Incredibles, wouldn't it? 13, no. <laughs> 
Hope it was following that match. And now it's a dedicated tennis channel, don't they? I've had it for about a decade now. Mm -hmm. I think that's, from what I'm led to believe, also can't do any harm, can it? If, uh, yeah. Promote the sport, get sponsors involved. I think it's owned by the Federation, or certainly a large chunk of it's owned by the Federation. <laughs> Lucas Simateo is on your side of the court. Give us an update on the body language and how he's looking. It's fine. I mean, maybe starting to look a little tired, but I'll tell you, he is just a rock. Mentally, physically a rock. And I just can't believe what he went through in the last round. Let's go through what he did in the first set, come up short and continue to move forward. Just battle. back and play but keep it below the heart of the net make the next shot so difficult Berrettini's coming out of his shoes to hit that forehand that he needed and he's now down two more break points Position A to make the final here. He's up a set and a break now. Second set. And one set to none. Had to come at some point, didn't it? Break points were totting up. Yeah. Berrettini was just uh, plugging the holes, wasn't he?
That's the thing about Nadal though, Nick. He never gets too upset, never panics. He makes you come up with the goods if you want to save the break points against him. I mentioned the fact how many first serves Berrettini's made on those break points. I think all but one. The epic stadium that is Arthur Ashe. 23,000 when full, not quite this evening, but we're not too far away. Miserable day outside weather-wise, so the men's semi-finals taking place indoors. So Rafa first won here, it was actually on the Monday. On his first title, he won here in New York due to the inclement weather. slam for him and this man to do so yeah, a lot of people forget that Nick yeah, that was hot on the heels of Federer completing the Grand Slam wasn't it 09 Federer did it at the French His forehand's big. And Raphael's saying, you don't need to tell me. I've been with him for the last 15 years. That shot in particular this week has been, I think, a revelation for Rafa, especially on the surface. supporting look at this momentum that Nadal's been able to work in his favor he's won eight of the last ten points love that timely serve and volley you know the strategic surgical Serve, wasn't it? 103 miles an hour. Yes. 
forget the comebacks that Diego Schwartzman made against him. And he was down 4-love and 5-1, wasn't he, in sets 1 and 2. Pegged him back. Berrettini give just to have a, a little bit of that Schwartzman backhand right now. Gets tired of executing that pattern of play. Let first service. How much more to come from Berrettini's game do you think there is, Rob, when you look at him? How complete is he now and maybe in three or four years from now? What do you think of the areas he can improve? He's so good at holding it to the last minute, but if you know Nadal, he always goes cross-court on that shot. He fakes up the line, holds it, holds it, and then the last minute. Oh, I think 13, he's going to get better off the backhand side. And I think if he can transition a little bit too, Nick, that'll be a bonus, but... What he, what he mustn't neglect are his weapons. So important that you don't spend too much time working on your weaknesses. Remember what does the damage. As we like to say, what pays the mortgage, and that's the serve and the forehand. Keep working on those. same page in terms of Berrettini's progression yeah there's no doubt it, to me I look at it he's only going to get smarter tactically he's got such upside to it I think the biggest thing the biggest weapon he has right now his mental makeup is so strong he doesn't get real emotional doesn't ride the roller coaster mentally the backhand's going to get better I think that slice is also going to get involved as he moves forward Let's not forget the movement either. I think that'll be a crucial component too, gentlemen. Ah. 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 
And I think the biggest thing is the big three. They're going to age out at some point. Then we'll be playing in their 50s. And this guy's going to inherit the throne. He's right there. Are you sure, Luke, they're not going to be playing in their 50s? <laughs> we well, heard this. Who it is. Late who it is. So. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Is the arrears is Matteo Berrettini. He has been outstanding this evening in his first semi final of the major. He's done a set and a break. And there was an app doing the rounds, wasn't there, about a month ago? And that, an app that uh, showed you a, a picture of. Uh, Someone now and someone when they were 30 years from now. We had, I saw the app actually do the Federer and Nadal Djokovic. <laughs> I think in their 80s and uh, well, who knows. But isn't that the big question, guys? What happens when the big three depart? I, I think that's amazing. And then what Djokovic, what happened here to him with the shoulder? How, how fragile dominance is. He wins Wimbledon. He comes in here, the number one seed, and all of a sudden, just like that, the shoulder just just breaks down on him, and he has to default. Opens up, opens up the draw. Now, too true. Well, if you're Matteo Berrettini, it's probably best not to know Nadal's record from a position of being up two sets to love. But he is on the cusp of being just that right now. I suppose the good news, Rob, is that the only guy that did beat him from two sets was an Italian. And it was here. I mean, the so open. I mean, that increases the odds dramatically, doesn't it? <laughs> Let's Insert Fanini. <laughs> Absolutely, Luke. Yes, good memory, Spot Luke. On. Of course, that is just at the majors. You remember the year, Luke? Oh, geez, I'm thinking this is three or four years ago that I, right? Yep. 2015. Sets out in style. Three set points. Not to be 
second set. Another. Just the one break, Kulia Fanadal in the second, and he is oh so close to another US Open final. Six games to four. Nadal leads two sets to win. Well, a good set of tennis from Berrettini again, but not quite good enough for me. Yeah, just coming up short. I mean, that first set percentage is great, isn't it? But the effectiveness of that first serve is what's quite astonishing. It just again highlights how well Nadal has been able to neutralize one of Berrettini's biggest weapons, only winning 63% of, of those particular points. And if you think coming into the match, Berrettini was almost at 80% first serve points won. So Nadal's done a heck of a job there when he's got that first serve back in play. But another watertight set. Four and cross court in particular from Nadal. Rock solid. Well, guys, if I was commissioner tennis right now, I would allow Fanini to walk out of the locker room and take take Berrettini's place right now. That would freak Nadal out. <laughs> take me in. Take me in. And how you feeling if you if you're Medvedev right now, the doll who just bone crushed you in Canada. Yeah, it's too true. Sets in the bag. It looks distinctly likely that we will see Daniel Medvedev against Rafael Nadal in the Two final zero. here on Sunday, unless Matteo Berrettini can produce something extraordinary in the next couple of hours. He will start the third. Set deficit, Rob. Yeah, of course. Roger Federer did it at Miami. Remember that? Nick, when the final there used to be a best of five sets. And I think what's impressed me so much about Berrettini is at the start of each of the opening two said he is stuck with Nadal. That's not easy, especially given the circumstances, the magnitude of the occasion for him. How about 
like that for a wrecking ball of a forehead. For sure, there might be a few tournament directors and some 250s and 500s who are adding this guy's name to the list of players they want to on their acceptance list, of course, because at those events are not mandatory. So you're looking for those players who are going to put bums on seats. There's one spot left on Team Europe, isn't there, for the Lever Cup. I wouldn't be surprised if Berrettini got the call, unless you know something I don't. Yes. They need more players? <laughs> <What>? <laughs> to get frustrated the kids starting to chat a little bit going to his box talking about breaking his racket gesturing taking a base of action from the forehand many have over the years Martini's footwork just slowing him down a little. Game, and Nadal seconds. has a very ominous break at the start of the third. What a return that was. We've spoken about how well he neutralized the first serve of Berrettini in set number two. Berrettini only winning 69% of the points behind the first serve in that second set. Tournament average for the Italian was almost 80. And once again, Nadal has hit delivered when it matters most. Oh, this is where his patience 
And it's really going to be tested now. A few things going against Berrettini. He's down two sets to love. If you want to keep a good attitude, you want to keep fighting. Take a page out of this guy's book. Look, look, we joked about them being 50 and playing. Obviously, we were in jest. But did you think at 33 you would still see Nadal playing at this level if you sort of go back 10 years? Did you think this was possible for him? Everyone talks about how physically he still plays the sport. And that wasn't going to be possible at 33 for him. Did, did you think he could still play at this level at this age? Not, the, not as intense as he plays. Not as intense as he practices. I mean, I think the impressive thing is when you watch him practice, he's he's in game enough. speed every swing. And what that does to your body, you know, it's always, you know, when is this guy's body parts just going to start falling off? You know, his arm's going to fall off or his knees are going to give out. But they don't. And this is, these hard courts are not easy to play on and to recover from at that age. Yeah, the point's a little shorter this year. It's been, as we say, continually tweaking the game. What's happened here? It's checking, I think, the change of balls yep. are coming. Fresh racket Nadal for Nadal. And for Berrettini, I think this is so important to send a message to Nadal because they're going to be locking horns in the future to just show Nadal, listen, I'm going to stay right with you to the last one. I'm going to be fighting, scrapping. I'm going to give you everything I got. I may, I may go down, but I'm going to go down mentally tough, physically tough, and tactically, tactically keep going. You're sending the message, the tone yes. of what you're going to be. Yeah, you're sending it to the rest of the locker room, aren't you, Luke? Yeah, because here's the thing. If Nadal senses that you're going to give up when you're down, he's going to use that as another weapon. He sees that as a weakness. of the match from that side well he had one return winner i remember i think in the first set didn't he but you're right luke there's not many two in fact spot on That's a great game. game a love hold for the Italian. The man from Rome has equipped himself very nicely. And he's down a break in the third. And two sets of
Time. Well, the good news for Matteo Berrettini, as far as the rest of the year is concerned, is he actually has almost nothing to defend. Looking through his results after the US Open last year, won a couple of matches in Chengdu, Beijing, Shanghai, but really nothing of any note. Wasn't really in the main draws for any of those tournaments. When you look at where his ranking is now, he's only going to be 300 points off the top 10, is Berrettini, after his run here. Well, how'd you like to play him indoors? Mm. Fall in Europe? <laughs> Big serving forehand. <laughs> oh. We saw Marco Cecchinato made a semi-final, didn't we, in Paris last year. He's fallen away this year. He's back down in the 60s in terms of the ranking. It fair to say that it can be a little troublesome that second year when you put a lot of points on the board. Do you see that happening at all to Berrettini? I think the difference for me is the base that Berrettini's built, Nick, by winning so many matches. He's won more matches at the 250 level than just about anybody this season winning those smaller titles then making this run here I think it's a slightly different scenario different sort of game isn't it as well Cecchinato. yeah he's, this guy's got some serious weapons you know Cecchinato's uh, got a very nice all-round game and, and that's the point I was making when Luke and I were having that discussion you know, you want weapons in the sport. You'd rather have one big hole, if you want to call it that, or one big weakness like Berrettini's backhand. Give me the weapons with that every day of the week. I'll take a serve and forehand. The one thing yeah. about having a glaring yeah. weakness just like Sampras, they know where the ball's going most of the time. Takes out a lot of the guesswork. Sampras knew everybody was tagging, going to his backhand. Edberg knew everybody was going to his forehand. They could really jump on some and really be kind of anticipate a lot of that stuff. This kid is loaded with upside. both of you is temperament wise he seems to be quite level headed doesn't he I think that's his strength seeing him you know compete this entire tournament it's been nice and steady in this match Let and I think remember the stat you guys said how he he ran through just tournaments without losing his serve mm -hmm. once that is an interesting stat yeah both Gestad and Stuttgart Let he's like what is it like it's been done by only by 13 players in the history of the game. Some really rare stat like that. Elite company. Yeah. about the mentality of the Italians. I mean, I think in, in Fabio Fanini, we've got somebody who is quintessentially Italian. When he wants to play, we know what kind of player he can be. He can beat the very best on their favorite surfaces. 
can be a little up and down, but to tell you what, this young crop is very strong between the ears. So mentally tough, you look at Lorenzo Soniger. No, and how well does he compete week in, week out? Thomas Fabiano, who's had a lovely run of late, he's a little older. Stefano Traveglia. Then you've got Yannick Sinner when you're talking about some of the younger guys. Oh, that kid's tough as nails. And he's in good hands too, under the tutelage of Ricardo Piatti, who incidentally has just split with Borna Chorich, so I'm sure he'll be giving all his attention to Sinner now. Just 19 years of age is Yannick. With himself. No, that was a golden opportunity. Put the match to bed right here. How do you like that? 13, 14. was a good drop shot. I think even if Nadal had not slipped there, he wouldn't have made this one. Look how short that is, so close to the net and the side spin. Ten. In fact, he's on the drop shots played tonight. Game. No, no. Well, there's the ticket to the big dance, Nick. It no, certainly no, no, no. is. That'll be on Sunday. Nadal requires two more. Minutes. And two sets to know. Hey guys, would it be in your wheelhouse if Italy wins a Davis Cup in the next five years? Oh, that's a good shot. That's a very good shot. Can you imagine how that nation would go tennis crazy if they won Davis Cup with these youngsters? Absolutely. And it's certainly not out of the realms of possibility, especially when you think they can play on, on most surfaces, uh, Luke, yeah. this, this guy winning on grass, plays a given, uh, and, you know, the games translate so well to hardcore. Indoors, it doesn't matter. I mean, and, and just think of how crazy that nation went when their Fed Cup team had so much success not too long ago. I'll tell you one thing, Luke, they're an absolutely brutal group in Madrid because the Group F USA, Italy, and Canada. That's the toughest group of the lot. Yeah, right. yeah. But they'll learn from it. There's no losing there. There's winning and learning. And I just think this, the experience is just insanely so productive for them. If you weren't with us at the change events, we were just discussing the Davis Cup groups. And of course, Italy in with Canada. Marty Fish leading the charge for the States. And of course, 
the Canadians and Italy in the same group. That's a rough one, isn't it, Rob? Wow, it is. I mean, you can see Canada and Italy contesting a few Davis Cups down the road, given the young talent that they have in their respective countries. Let's not forget Canada with Dennis and Felix won the junior Davis Cup in the Magic Box. There's this tsunami size wave of attack that comes at you and it just keeps coming. You know how many points Nadal has lost on serve tonight? Collectively over the three sets. 13 points 13, is no. all Nadal's lost on serve tonight. And he has been in ominous form in the last two weeks. to describe this, down. Nick. That is phenomenal, doll. He really has been like the king sweeping the squatters out of his castle. What a game from Rafa. <laughs> Mana leads five against the one. They may have been a little worried for a while in the opening set. It's all smiles now. That never gets tired from mum and dad either. Sister lapping it up. And there's fiance. Cool as ever. Well, if Berrettini does indeed end up going down here. I, I want to remind him of some words by one of the greatest track and field athletes, Ed Moses, and he said losing is not the end. On the contrary, it's the beginning of the inner dialogue upon which progress depends. He's played Roger on centre court at Wimbledon, so as you say, Rob, two great experiences for him this year. Absolutely. And the Dal is like, it's like he's down match point. It's insane how locked in he is. He's still going to his box. Every point is played like the last point he'll ever play. It's insane. Mr. Nadal is trying to call on the left. He never takes a point off, line. ever. The ball was called in. What Connor say? He plays like he's broke? Yes. <laughs> that is exactly. I'm watching this. He's not allowing himself to enjoy this at all. He just wants to bury his opponent.
He's forced Nadal to go to another level for quite some time, but it's match point. Set 